welcome to part two of the video about rubrics. So in part one, I created a rubric. I showed you how you can create as a teacher a rubric within book widgets. And in part two, I'm going to show you how you can grade a rubric within book widgets. So the first thing I'm going to do is let my students fill out this rubric. So I'm going to fill it out as a student myself. So I think I use uh, correct language. It's intermediate, so sometimes I choose some wrong words, then I think in general the presentation is structured logically, I met my time, my time limit, I think every component will be there. I also think that I answered really good on my teachers and my, co my fellow students' answer questions. Then I think the presentation went okay, but there were some hiccups and I think I also made some eye contact, but I also fear that I'm not that enthusiastic here. So when I'm done scaling myself as a student, I click on the submit button. Here it is, and I'm going to enter my name and send it to my teacher. Now, as a teacher, I'm going to create this rubric for my students. To do this, I go to bookwidgets.com, of course, I log in into my account and I go to grades and reporting. Since this isn't connected with the learning management system, I click on no course and no class and here I will find my widgets that I shared via a link with my students. So I can see my analytic rubric right here and then I can see all the students that submitted this rubric here. There are a few things you can do in this grading dashboard with the rubric question type. The first thing I'm going to do is grade student by student. So I click first on Helen and you can see here that it's on a score, but it's not filled out yet because the student reflected on her work. But of course, as a teacher, I need to indicate what score she will get on her presentation. You can also see here the icons and this really states that these answers were given by students and when I am going to override this you can see that it will be dark blue. So as a teacher I'm just going over it and I think she used correct language but sometimes she used the wrong words. Her presentation is very logically, she met the time limit, all components were there, but for me, they weren't always equally clear. She did answer really good on my question. I think her presentation went okay, but showed some hiccups. And I also saw that she made eye contact, eye contact but then she didn't speak very enthusiastically. So this is actually how I graded. And you can see when I changed things here, the score will automatically change as well and be adapted to what you choose as a teacher. So this is basically how you can grade a rubric as a, as a teacher and also how you can make sure that your students reflect on the criteria that you give right here in the rubric as well. Below every question type, of course, you can enter your comments. Um, so this is a good way to, to, to give feedback and it, it's really interesting to just hear um, if you added something really bad or she didn't met uh, some expectation expectations, you can just enter the comments here and give the feedback here that students will get back when you return the work to the student. So this is basically how it goes. Click on this arrow to jump to the next one. And again, make sure to indicate everything right here as well. And enter your comment if that's needed. So here you go. I graded all my student work right here. And you can also see the average score here on this question type. If you really just have to create your rubric and there are no other question types involved, it is maybe a better way to just click on the question right here and then create your students here because they're all below each other. So you can just scroll and indicate everything you want to instead of just jumping from one to another student. And of course, you can enter your feedback here as well. Another thing you can do, and this is interesting because when you're going to send this back to your students, this is a rubric on grades. So students will also see the grades on this rubric. Sometimes as a teacher, you do want to grade for yourself, but you don't want to 
give them to your students. So in this case, I indicated first that I, um, when I created this rubric, I indicated that I want correction and I want grades, but I don't want my students to see it. So I can change this here, and this is also kind of a new feature within book widgets. So I can configure the feedback that my students will receive back. So in this case, when I click on this cogwheel right here, my students will get the points, the points per question. They, it will show correctness, but of course that's not the case here for students, and it will show the correct answers as well. In this case, I don't want that. I just don't want to show the score and I don't want to, to show the points per question. So in this case, I can just eliminate that and my students won't get that. So if I save this configure student, configured student feedback view and then return all my feedback to my students without getting the grades, of course, and it's a little bit more formative for your students instead of summative, but you still have the grades right here. This is in general, if I change the configure student feedback here, this is for all my students, but I can do something else as well. So I could say, okay, everyone can see their points, safe. But for a few students, I think they get a second chance and they really need to practice. So I want to send back just the formative feedback instead of the grades. So I can click on, for example, here, John. And then instead of returning everything with grades, I can configure the feedback view for just this single student. So here I can choose not to show the points and not to show the points per question. And you can see when this little man is blue, this is how the student will receive the feedback. And of course, if you've entered feedback in a comment, that always will come through. And you can change to the teacher view here by clicking again on it and then you can see how they will receive the feedback. When I click on this little X, I will see this, this uh, exclamation mark. And this just says that when you return all the feedback, John will get a different feedback from all the other students. And that's basically what I wanted to show you on how you can create a rubric within book widgets. If you didn't check out the previous video on how you can create such rubric within book widgets, make sure to take a look at part one. I've put a link in the description below to part one. Thank you very much. Bye bye.